Welcome everyone to what feels like a, a relieving space today. We started uh, holding space a few weeks ago, uh, this truth and justice vigil during the course of the trial for Derek Chauvin, uh, who was convicted today on all three counts of the murder of George Floyd. Um, we at, I invited a number of teachers, Black, African descended teachers that I had the good fortune of sitting with in retreats in 2019. Mioke Kane Barrett, who's joining us today, was one of the organizers for that retreat, which was um, the largest gathering of Black Buddhist teachers here in the West, but teachers from all over the world. Mioke is the Bishop of the Nishiren Shu Buddhist Order of North America. She's the first woman uh, and first American to hold this position. She's also guiding teacher at Mioke G Temple in Houston. And she's also she's a lot of firsts, the first woman and the first African American Japanese descendant to be ordained in the Nishiren Shu Order. I'm so happy to have you here with us, Mioke, who is going to bring her wisdom and chanting and drumming. When we spoke earlier, we weren't really sure when the visual, when the verdict was going to come, and we both agreed that energy movement is what was needed this evening. Uh, and for me, that still feels the case. So thank you so much for joining us, Miyake. Thank you, Stacy. Mm -hmm. So how is everyone feeling? <laughs> <laughs> and please just shout it out. So relief, grateful, any worry, any residual anxiety. When I picked up my grandson today, I live near Texas Southern University, historically black college, which is across the street from a historically black high school. And the helicopters were flying around the neighborhood and I thought, oh geez, they're waiting for something to happen. Uh, and so they were just, it's like setting people up to make sure that something negative would happen just so they could film it or whatever they were trying to do. Uh, but fortunately, most people, whatever they were doing, they weren't out there. So I'm going to give you this one song today to start us off. It's by uh, one of my favorite artists, uh, Carrie Newcomer called Breathe In, Breathe Out. Now I'm thinking that a reminder to breathe and let it go is something that we have to consider well at all times, especially when it's difficult, especially when we are boiling over with rage or sadness or grief and anger. And I was thinking uh, in particular about anger because I'm still angry. Uh, I don't know if many of you feel the same way. And I'm angry that we have to go through this all the time. I'm angry that we have to struggle for people to be seen not as other, but as self, that we are all one. And it's not a pipe dream, you know, it's, it's what we can give to each other, that sense of oneness, that connection. And all of us need it, all of us want it. And imagine, if you are the one person who met that incident with uh, Chauvin and you had been the person that touched his heart, 
I think about that. One of the things I learned as a Buddhist was that all of us have a mission. And the mission is something that we were born to fulfill. And we may not believe it because some of us have had really, we might say crappy lives and there's nothing special about us. You know, so what kind of mission could I possibly have? But if you could be that one person who shows up with a smile or the person who looks at a homeless person and sees his humanity for that minute, you've accomplished a great deal. And we tend not to think about that. The one of the things I learned early, um, cause there was a man that I used to see on the street corner and he was uh, pretty gnarly and smelled bad. And I always tried to smile at him and greet him. And it was really difficult because I kept thinking, it's not making any sense. It's not changing anything. He's still here. And one day he just came up to my window and he smiled and he turned and walked away. And it felt like such a victory because I never saw him again after that. And I thought, well, I don't know what happened to him, but I like to think that, okay, maybe something wonderful happened. And it was uh, a source of comfort to realize that we can make something happen by just being human. We can say to each other, something wonderful is happening to me. Something wonderful is happening to you. I see it, I feel it, I choose it, and I use it. So something wonderful is always happening to us. And we just have to remember that it is. I think so often, and I'm not sure it goes back to uh, original sin thinking, that um, you're born in sin and all that stuff. And when I became a Buddhist, I learned that I was a child of the Buddha. And I thought, wow, I'm a Buddhist kid. <laughs> yeah. And I started to really consider that, that I'm the Buddha's child. Each one of us is a child of the Buddha. He is also our teacher. He is also our sovereign. And in that regard, there are times when we can sit in front of the Buddha and we can just let it rip. So we're gonna do a little bit of that tonight because <laughs> I'm in the mood to let it rip and hope you are too. Um, not because we're angry, uh, but because there's something possibly unfinished for us at some tension we might be holding in our bodies that coming to this day, we did not think it would happen so quickly. At least I don't know about you guys up there, but down here with all the garbage we have going on in Texas is like, whoa, you know, it's stressful. So, okay. I'm going to just get started. How many of you have altars already set up? Are you in front of it? Do you have a Buddha or something to represent that? So that you're yelling at your parent We're going to start off slow, though. So that we can make sure the pronunciation is correct. And I apologize for going outside of the screen. But that's typical scatterbrain. Okay. 
everyone back? Now there is a bow that we call thy high, and you may have seen it. It's a five pointed bow where your knees and uh, your feet and your head are on the floor. And so that's what we call a dai hai. So that's what we do at first. And rather than just going nuts, trying to get this all the rest of this to you, I'll take care of it. And if you want it, I can send it to you later. Bye, hi. Know this, this place where the stupa is erected is the place of enlightenment. Here the Buddhas attend somebody. Here the Buddhas turn the wheel of the Dharma. Here the Buddhas entered into Parinirvana. Honor be <clears throat> to our eternal master of the Dharma. Shaka Muni Buddha. Honor be to the great wisdom, the eternal Dharma that equally benefits all, the one vehicle of Myohorenge Kyo. Honor be to our founder, representing Jogyo, the great Bodhisattva, Nichiren Shonin. Please release your hands from Gasho. Place the fingers of the left onto the fingers of the right and complete the circle with your thumbs so that they look like this. You've seen the Buddha statues. And that should be placed, your hand should be placed at about three finger widths below your navel as you straighten your back. Center your head and align your body so that you are comfortable. It's the most important thing, your comfort. Begin breathing in slowly and deeply through your nose. and breathing out slowly and completely through your mouth. You may wish to count to eight as you're breathing in. Hold for the count of four and breathing out to the count of eight. Our intention is to set up a cycle of breath that is long, slow, gentle, and deep. And this is important 
in this session in particular, because our intention is purification of the mind, the heart, and the body. So we may receive the benefit of chanting the Odaimoku. Jo Shingyo. Place your hands in Gasho as we now begin to chant the sacred title. We will start uh, in three basic parts. 
First, we will take a breath, chant Namu Myoho, breath, Renge Kyo, breath. In the second part, nam, a breath, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, another breath. And in the third part, we'll just start off from where we end up at that point, uh, the beginning of the third part, and just go around the mountain, see how we're feeling, what energy drives us. Any questions? Everybody ready? Could you, Nioke, could you say a bit what the, the words mean, Namu? Yes. Okay. Namu means devotion or respect for what follows. Myo Ho Ren Ge Kyo is the title of the Lotus Sutra in Chinese, Japanese pronunciation of Chinese. Um, it's also the San Sadharma Pundarika Sutra. Um, and the thought was at the time, back in the 13th century, that if you knew the title, you knew everything. And so a simple practice was developed so that those who were uneducated could just jump in and go to town with it. So it's just continuously chanting devotion to the Sutra of the Lotus Flower of the Wonderful Dharma. Myoho means um, wonderful Dharma. Myo, the character Myo, Ho. Dharma, wonderful Dharma. Renge uh, stands for lotus flower uh, because it's the only plant that produces a flower and seed at the same time, indicative of the simultaneity of cause and effect, but also the fact that it grows in a muddy swamp and yet emerges from that swamp uh, untouched, much like our own Buddha nature. And Kyo is sutra. Some have said it to be translated as sound or warp of cloth. But if you imagine how sound vibrations travel and just imagining how they flow around the world. And so repetitive chanting puts you in a different space. Um, it is a form of meditation that most people don't think about because everybody thinks that it's supposed to be silent, um, but we're not silent meditators. And we do use silence in small parts, but the teaching of the Lotus Sutra is that the chanting of it polishes the mirror of your life. So even as you're unaware of all that it can do, it is doing its work. It is polishing your life. It's implanting the Eightfold Path, the Paramitas, because you start to find yourself following those things without even thinking about it, because it becomes part of who you are. At least that's been my truth. So, any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> Namu Myo Renge Kyo Namu Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Please release your hands from Gasho and return to the meditation position. And I encourage you, if you are a gatherer, to gather the energy of chanting the Odaimoku into your body. And take deep breaths and release them loudly without a hesitation.
in this period. Our purpose is at once to reconnect with the three treasures, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and as I mentioned before, the parent, teacher, sovereign aspect of it, of the Buddha. Because sometimes we all need a dad. And I imagine the Buddha opening his arms and embracing all of us. And the Dharma is the teachings. And the Sangha is all the good friends that we have made and are continuing to make throughout the world, even if we don't know them. And the wonder of the character Myo, which in addition to meaning wonderful and mysterious, also means to open your heart, your mind, and your circumstance. And this is entirely what we're here to do. So that we can collectively and individually come to embody the teachings of the Buddha. So that when we meet others who are in need of our understanding, we are prepared, we are able. And this is how we deepen and develop our faith in the Dharma. As we step up and embody the teachings, we lead the way for those who are in need. So we now deepen our faith with the merit of the Odaimoku, chanting in this last period of silence. Jin Shin Yo.
with reverence, we offer up the merits we have accumulated through the chanting of the Odaimoku, so that in doing so, we may receive the greatest of compassion through the transcendental powers of the original Buddha. For all people, we uphold this universal Dharma teaching of equality that benefits all. We deeply vow to diligently strive for the improvement of both our societies and ourselves, as well as to diligently strive for the achievement of world peace. We pray that all people throughout the four corners of the world may return their lives to the eternal Buddha's pure land through the wonderful Dharma of Myo Ho Ren Ge Kyo. Namu Myo Ho Ren Ge Kyo. <clears throat> we pray that each and every family member, as well as our benefactors and our friends, all live in accordance with the true Dharma. We pray they all enjoy good health in both body and mind. May they increase their understanding of the Buddha's wisdom, expiate their past transgressions, do good deeds, and lead a virtuous life. May they learn to respect each other. We pray that they embrace the correct practice of Buddhism, perform virtuous work, assiduously improve themselves, and achieve family happiness. May they all obtain eternal peace and happiness. We pray that all beings, as well as myself, will attain, will awaken to the true nature of reality, which is the Buddha nature, and that we will attain the enlightenment of the Buddha. Namu myoho renge kyo. We pray for all of the deceased for the spirits of our ancestors, for all those who have formed a relationship with the Buddha and those who have not. May you all follow the benevolent life of the Tathagata. May you cross the ocean of suffering, reach the further shore and attain Buddhahood. May the merits we have accumulated through this deep offering of prayer be distributed equally among all living beings. May we all attain the enlightenment of the Buddha. May all the Dharma realms equally benefit all. Namu myoho renge kyo. Sentient beings are innumerable. I vow to save them all. Our defilements are inexhaustible. I vow to quench them all. The Buddha's teachings are immeasurable. I vow to know them all. The way of the Buddha is unexcelled. I vow to attain the path sublime. With this body, until I attain Buddhahood, I will uphold my faith in the Lotus Sutra. Namu myoho renge kyo. Namu myoho renge kyo. Namu myoho renge kyo. Rai hai. Thank you. So was that wild enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have an even funnier part to work with later in a few minutes. Because I think sometimes we're too serious and we found a way in our esoteric practices to come up with something that made us laugh. So we do it so we can laugh at each other and ourselves. Does anybody have any questions or would like to offer a comment? Uh, 
on how you feel at this point. And we have open sessions Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings at eight. And I will leave the information with Stacy if you care to join us anytime. Please feel free to do so. And I'll just say thank you, thank you, Miyoke, for leading in the chant. It's just so powerful and vibrates throughout the system. And there's so much energy there for me, certainly that needed to move more than I more than I thought. So yeah. I have deep gratitude. Thank you. I felt that today too. <laughs> get it out, get it out. Well, my voice could not continue, uh, but I decided to let you carry me. And that was wonderful. Thank you. That's what we do for each other. Yes, absolutely. We used to chant 24 hour sessions. We still do that now, but um, we're not united in one place. So we're chanting that way around the world every month on the full moon. Uh, it starts in Japan and, and comes to Houston and then goes to Hawaii and all these different places. And it was fascinating to see the different ways people chant, the different altars, the locations. So we have folks in uh, um, South America, Korea, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia. So the, uh, it goes through that 24 hour cycle where each of us chants an hour. And back when I was younger, we used to chant hours together, you know? And I am thought, I'll never do that again. Uh, not for four and five hours at a time. No way, Jose. But it was fun even chanting to each other over the phone when you finished your hour so you could pass it on to the next person. And the one thing um, that happens is that everybody becomes closer without even having to talk about it um, because there's a deeper connection that happens uh, physically, emotionally, and just the vibration. You know, when you feel a person sitting next to you, which we can't do right now, but you know, that energy of chanting together and keeping in rhythm and matching tones and you know harmonies that's powerful very powerful it's already in all of us anyway just the buddha nature the reality is we all have buddha nature right we just have to wake up to it <laughs> and then do something with it um, i know in our teachings it always says to uh, awaken to the reality of all things and every time I think about what is the reality of all things, things are just as they are. You know, it's not a magical thing. And to be able to see things just as they are, not the way we want them to be, and to accept things just as they are. And somehow it uh, plants something in you. I remember when my dog died because uh, she had choked on something and I couldn't help her. I tried everything and I couldn't help her. And I was holding her and she looked at me and she kind of quieted. And it was like she said to me, I'm okay and I love you. And she left. And that was the dearest offering of a death that I had ever seen. And I recognized it for the gift it was, um, that there comes a point for all of us where we have to accept that that's inevitable. So I hope I don't go run screaming out the door when it's my turn. <laughs> so. so let me see, we have a few minutes. 
I want to see if I can do this. So as we were chanting before, Namu is right here, right in front of you. Okay. Then you come down with both hands on your lap, Mio, and pretend this is my lap. <laughs> Mio, Ho, Ren, Ge, Kyo. So it's Namu, Mio, Ho, Ren, Ge, Kyo. The next step, Namu, Mio, Ho, back down, Ho, <laughs> Ren, Ge, Kyo. Namu, Mio, wait a minute. Mio, Namu, Mio, Ho, Yo ho ren ge kyo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do it a lot and I still mess it up. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Third one. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu. Myo ho ren ge kyo. So what that means, the first one, namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Negative karma, blow it out. Namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Bring in the good stuff. And the last one, namu myo ho ren ge kyo. Lift up the Buddha with your hands, the Buddha's feet. You hear that expression all the time. Yeah. Does that make sense? The danger is because we try to pretend that we can do it alone. So we're watching each other to try and keep up. And inevitably, we blow it. And so there's always a lot of fun, always a lot of laughter. So I thought we'd end with that as much as we could to see. And I'll play one song before we get started, if I can do that. I just want to offer deep gratitude, me okay, for you being here with us and uh, sharing your uh, practice and wisdom with us. And to um, let everyone know that um, there is an opportunity to support me. Okay, me. Okay, um, did not hesitate to come sit with us, knowing what was happening in our in our city here. Um, and as a Dharma teacher, this is her. She earns her livelihood by teaching. So, if you are able to uh, support me, okay. Um, you can go to the Common Ground website, and I believe Shelly put a link in the chat, and um, you can enter Miyoke's name, and just like all of our other guest teachers, Miyoke will get two-thirds of the dana offered this evening, and we, Common Ground, will um, use the, the balance to continue operations for the center, which we're hoping maybe we'll have something in person sometime soon. <laughs> Good place to leave it. <laughs> Thank you so much, me okay. I will send you the sheet on how to do that thing and you can get together sometime and start chanting. <laughs> okay. And see how long you can keep it up before you fall apart. Because <laughs> it is so much fun. <laughs> okay. Thank it you reminded all. Reminded me of the the Macarena. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Buddhist Macarena. <laughs> the Buddhist Macarena. There we go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll send it to Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you all for spending time. Thank you, everyone.